right, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good. I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. Happy Monday, honey. I see y'all in the chat. Y'all got the gifts. Y'all got the memes. Y'all are a mess. So it has been a lot going on, and we had to do a Spotify Live because I want to hear from all of you guys. Um, If you guys do not know, I had recently released another deep dive for the month of February. I have been working on it off and on for about a week and a half. And it was very interesting because it was so much talk about UFO. So I wanted to work on the deep dive because it's, it kept making me think of just so many things I knew about aliens and quote unquote UFOs throughout the years. And so it led me into the whole Project Blue Beam conspiracy, Project Blue Book, which is a totally different. Um, and that wasn't even a conspiracy. That was fact. And just a whole bunch of other things. And so I had a really good time putting this deep dive together. And I've gotten a lot of really good feedback from it as well. So now there's a lot to unpack here. And what I find very interesting is that after I posted my deep dive and people watched it, I started getting all of these updates about Kim Kardashian. That all of a sudden, out of the blue, Kim Kardashian is now using quote unquote aliens to co-star in her new sexy skim campaign. So if you guys have not seen it, these pictures are viral all over social media. You have Kim looking slim and trim, and you have all of these alien females around her. Obviously, the alien heads are photoshopped on, but it's just very interesting that with the talk of the balloons being shot down and unidentified flying objects, here comes the Kardashians to capitalize on this new alien craze. Kim Kardashian is looking out of this world. The fashion mogul debuted a new campaign for her Skims swim collection, and she definitely sizzled in the snaps taken by Spring Breakers director Harmony Corinne. The reality star posed in suits from the collection while standing next to people dressed up as aliens in some majorly otherworldly photos. The new Skims line, which features the brand's largest assortment to date, will be available on February 21st. Kim teased the launch on Instagram with a post writing in part, quote, Skim Swim is finally coming back. Get ready for our biggest launch ever with all new, out-of-this-world styles and colors you have to see to believe. Plus the return of sold-out favorites on February 21st. Access Hollywood spoke with Kim and her famous fam back in 2022, when she was dating Pete Davidson. And she gushed about the comedian and more. But to me, I'm kind of looking at it even a little bit deeper because, again, remember when I talked about in the deep dive about um, President Ronald Reagan and I said, like, out of all the presidents, he was very much involved. He was really into aliens. I don't know if a lot of people are aware of that. So much so that he even had a meeting with Mikhail Gorbachev back in the day, and he wanted them to come together um, with USSR to figure out, you know, something that they can do in the event of an alien invasion. And I always thought that was very interesting. And one thing that sets Ronald Reagan apart from the other presidents is that he comes from Hollywood. He was an actor before all of this. So I find that very interesting that he was the actor president, and maybe because he was in Hollywood, there's something that he may know that other people do not know. Even with Kim being in Hollywood, you just never know. So I recently found this old C-SPAN interview of Ronald Reagan talking about a potential alien invasion. So I'm going to go ahead and play that for you guys here. I wasn't able to add it into the video because I couldn't find it at the time, but I just found it. And I hope you guys can hear. If not, it will be edited into this, you know, overall stream. But listen to the words that he says and how he talks about this alien invasion and how, you know, we may need something like that to bring the world together. It's just really creepy, especially now. This was back in the 80s and now it's 2023. And there's all this talk of new world orders and, you know, one world currency and all this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and play this for you guys. Y'all go ahead and check it out real quick. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish 
if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? What could be more alien to the universal aspirations of our peoples than war and the threat of war? All right, let me go ahead and bring on Tia Chanel. Go ahead and unmute your microphone. Hey, T, can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. How are you? I'm good. I feel like I haven't seen you in so long, even though I saw you last week <laughs> and on your deep dive. But I don't know. It's weird. But um, I'm good. And I hope you and your family are doing good, too. Thank you. We're hanging in there. So I caught your deep dive at work and I loved it. So um, growing up, and honestly, I still do watch um, reruns of the old school Unsolved Mysteries, and they were notorious mm-hmm. for their um, their alien and their like ghost stories. Aliens are known for is their advanced technology. And like you put in your doc, when you said that um, they made a deal with Hitler, that they gave them this advanced technology to do what they did. And in return, basically, they low-key, they quote-unquote mm-hmm. worship them. So it made me think too, like, you know, in the um, the book of Enoch, when the fallen angels taught us about um, technology and weapons and this and that. And even when you mentioned how the pyramids, how they perfectly are aligned to um, Orion and all that stuff, you really went deep in this. And I really liked it. There's that. <laughs> then I also wanted okay. to touch on um, the book of Enoch, which I know has been mentioned a couple of times, like on your uh, green rooms, people have brought it up in the past, but I think it's important to bring it up in this context as well. So the book of Enoch, for those who don't know, it's, um, it's a biblical slash historical book. It used to be considered scripture back in the day, right in the old Testament. But as the years went on, it was removed. I think it's because it was too deep. Um, some mm. there's the Ethiopian church. They still have it in their Bibles. Back in the day, it was, it was part of everyone's Bibles hundreds of years ago, but then it was, it was removed, but it's, it's widely available. You can find it online. Um, and I, but I bring it up in this conversation because in the book of Enoch, it's very explicit that, um, the ain't the fallen angels, quote unquote, maybe you can see them as aliens and whatnot. They, they gave man, they gave humankind, um, the knowledge they gave, they gave them not it, that, that book says that they gave them knowledge on weapons. They gave them knowledge on things like makeup, astrology, plants, um, like how to cultivate plants, um, different types of information. Right. The, and, but this is, this is obviously thousands of years ago, right. If, if we're going to believe that book to be true, why, why wouldn't it be true today? Right. Why wouldn't it be mm-hmm. that heavenly beings or beings that are more wise than us, why wouldn't it be that they wouldn't still in 2023 be giving people knowledge to advance humanity for whatever reason, for whatever ulterior motive? Um, I personally believe it's it's still the same thing. Like, just because basically what I'm trying to say is um, whether it's 2023 or whether it's thousands of years ago, a lot of a lot of the way that heavenly beings function or Mm-hmm. alien beings, I feel like it's still the same. And it's easy for us to forget about the old ways because they're the old ways. Um, but I personally still think that aliens slash fallen angels, however you want to approach it, function in a very, in a very similar way. Um, and that's really all I wanted to add to the conversation. That's really interesting because I never really looked at the book of Enoch like that. I had to do more research mm-hmm. on it. But that's interesting that it has all that information about, you know, the technology and these fallen angels giving humans, you know, this Mm -hmm. knowledge and it ended up being removed, Mm -hmm. you know. So maybe like Um, who said that's still not going on if that was going on back then? Because, again, like we always say, there's nothing new under the sun. mm -hmm. Exactly. And if also I study the the Bible as well, the the Bible we have today and even in the actual Bible in the New Mm -hmm. Testament. It even says that um, uh, there's a verse that says something like, you know, when you I'm paraphrasing, but it's like you should you should give to those who are homeless or those who are in need because you never know if you're ministering to angels. It it almost implies that there are heavenly beings among us. Mm. So why wouldn't it still be the case on the Mm -hmm. on the evil side, but also on the positive side? So right, remember that TV show. I remember when I was growing up with Michael Landon 
Highway to Heaven. Mm-hmm. Remember, he was really an angel. Mm. And he would, um, you're young, just the way you said, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. The way like, he said, mm, I was like, okay, he's young. <laughs> Who in the chat? <laughs> child is a child of the 90s. It was called Highway to Heaven. And it's very, so the aliens in this movie were underwater. Yes, they were hiding under like their ship in this whole scene. Now, you know what is so interesting now, I didn't even go into that in the deep dive because the deep dive would have been four hours child. By then I was like, okay, I'm done. But that's another conspiracy yeah. too, that a lot of people tend to think that aliens are up in the sky, you know, with the stars and the planets. But there's another conspiracy that the aliens are really living right. underwater. And think about it like this. Zulika made a perfect point um, in the chat about Namor, Namira, I don't know if I said his name right, but in the Black Panther movie, Black Panther Forever, remember, those were aliens living underwater. Mm-hmm. The, yeah, and he was like a Mayan or whatever. Right, you know, he was right. like an indigenous person. They were all living underwater. And so remember how I told you guys when I did my water deep dive that there's so much of the ocean that has not been discovered, you know, because the ocean goes so deep. And a lot of people tend to think that like the internet and the internet cables are up in the sky because we see phone cables in the sky. But I told you guys, none of the internet, none of the, this whole infrastructure that we have for internet mm-hmm. is in the sky. Everything is underwater. So imagine how much electricity mm-hmm. and energy and, right. you know, all that spiritual stuff, you know, cause everything, you know, like we say, energy never dies. It just transforms. And, and, you know, in order for energy to move around, it needs electricity, it needs water. So imagine how many things are down there underneath the ocean that we have no idea about. I'm definitely going to have to check this movie Abyss. That's really, really interesting. Yeah, and there's a lot of symbolism in the movie, too. Like, I just think it's so, like, interesting how this whole alien thing and spiritualism is connected. Because the, the, the reason why I went into the predictive program no. is because, you know, these aliens, right, whatever these beings are, they've been here for eons. So you can't mm-hmm. tell me that these aliens, these spirits, just whatever we want to call them, are not also feeding people information on what's to happen. You know, certain people and certain, you know, mm-hmm. power. So it's like, how come every time there's a movie or something, some type of natural disaster has, there's a movie that they're on point a year before, two years mm-hmm. before. Or The Simpsons. Mm-hmm. Right. Like it don't make sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and that, like Hitler. Some of that is coming from, you know, these beings telling certain people things to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the Hitler part, my, he, he learned so much. She said the Hitler one. He was like, the Nazi. I didn't think about it. Like, she's so smart. Like, I didn't think about that in the pyramids. Like, I always wondered about those pyramids. I don't believe that they just did that by themselves. And I really feel the same way, too. So you wasn't far fit, you know? You're not far Mm -hmm. from it when I believe that somebody could have helped them. We're not saying you didn't do it, but I believe someone could have assisted in giving you knowledge about what trajectory to hold the joint. You know what I mean? Like, when they say it's like a two-mile radius for Mm -hmm. how the, the way the pyramid is laid, it makes me think. We don't even have that technology in certain places here now out to build that and make that and even even think about it too remember when i had did that other deep dive and i was talking about um the georgia guidestones i mean they got destroyed early last year and when you look at Mm -hmm. that was look at the georgia guidestones they were written in many different languages on how we have to take care of the earth and all this other stuff but even more than that, the Georgia Guidestone, when you really study it, it was a giant sundial. When you look at how it was designed and built, yep. it was in the form of a giant sundial. And I just find the whole thing just really fascinating with all of that. And think about it, too. Um, RG made a good point in the chat. A lot of the scientists, I broke this down in other deep dives, were very much into spiritualism. Remember, Steve Jobs, before he discovered, not discovered, Mm -hmm. but before he, quote unquote, invented Apple, he went on a mystical journey to India. And a lot of these tech Mm -hmm. movies and people who deal in technology, Mm -hmm. they also use a lot of drugs, a lot of psychedelics, because, again, things like alcohol, Mm -hmm. psychedelics, 
it lowers your inability. It, it allows spirits in. It allows you to go and leave your body almost and go into other dimensions. After he came back from that spiritual journey in India, that is when he went and was able to invent the Apple computer. And again, remember when I showed you guys in the deep dive, when you look at the Apple logo yeah, and you, the put Apple, it together, yeah. you get an alien. That's not by coincidence. You know, when you even look at the Sahara Desert, um, they believe that the city of Atlantis is there in the Sahara, was there at the Sahara Desert. There was a river that came and that flowed straight through the Sahara. And when you look at the remains and the descriptions of what people said of what Atlantis looked like about it having those circular rings, and you look at the... uh, right there at Atlantis, you see uh, structures a- around that to that exactly describe that. Uh, I'm looking at it now. I never realized that. It's like a bunch of like round circles where it looks like a city in the middle of the desert. Yes, wow. ma'am. It looks exactly, and if you look at the descriptions of Atlantis, it matches exactly to how that looked. And if you mm-hmm. place water there around in each ring, it's the city of Atlantis. Um, wow. And there's great flow and like even the sediment and the rocks around there have been eroded in a certain way that could only have been done from a great flood of water rushing through. Where we came from, we migrated from old Ghana to Gambia. And mm-hmm. he will always say, you know, we didn't get this land easy. There were some deals that had to be made with other beings that are not of this world. They see us, but we don't see them. So when they mm. first came here... Yeah, they had to be um, certain parts of the land is used for farming. Some certain parts you cannot go to because those are for those spirits specifically. So there's a lot of places in my village where you can't go. And also when we first got there, um, there's he like at this point, I believe it. But I know it sounds crazy in mm-hmm. my village during the hours of 3 a.m. to 5. There's this being it's not a man it's not woman. It's not an animal. Um, this is what I was told, that um, mm. it has free reign over the land in my village because it was part of their ancestry. And you cannot be outside. So whatever it sees outside, whether it's food, um, whatever it needs, it has free reign. But no one can be outside. So usually in my village, when it gets really hot, you can sleep outside. But during, during those hours, you have to be inside. And I always thought, like, it and that's just, every it day. Scare us. It does not miss. And I Mm. thought they were joking, but this thing carries something like a bell. It's the closest sound to maybe a cowbell, but Mm. it's a sound that is not, I never, I can't even compare it. The closest thing I could compare it to is a cowbell. And I remember one time, I'm like, I want to see, I want to see, I always hear this sound. And my grandmother's like, if you open up that window, you see something that you don't like. Do not be surprised if you get up with a third eye. Or you go missing. Do not open that window. I'm 60 years old and I've never seen this being. I just know Mm. this is what we were told. Our ancestors agreed to it. And that's what it is. And my grandfather, he was a very religious and prominent person in our village. And we have a masjid. And he always used to say it was this guy that will always be there right before he opens up the masjid. And he would always be like, you know, you know, it's a small village. He's like, I don't know you. I don't know your people. Your last name is not familiar with our lineage. So, like, where do you come from? Like, are you from the nearby villages? And he will always say, if I tell you where I come from, I can't come here anymore. And he, he's like, you know, he didn't ask him for like 10 years. But every day that man will be there right before he opens up. So he's like, you know what? I need to know where you're from because you can't keep coming to my mudget and I don't know where you're from. And one day he said, like, you know, He's 300 years old. You know, he's from another world. He had a whole family and he converted to Islam. So he's basically on the run. And, you know, Mm -hmm. this is the only um, masjid that he feels comfortable in. And they have their own cultures. They have their own languages. Um, Some of them, they have families. Some are good and some are bad. But he never said what he is. And you know, my grandfather took that in and then when he turned around, the guy was gone and he didn't see him for at least, well, going on 50 years. So he will always say what? things like that. And my grandmother will always say your grandfather, when he has friends over, especially after sundown, cover your hair and be respectful because your grandfather don't have friends. 
he has people that he has to continue these deals with that came from, you know, our ancestors. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.